Hi, welcome to episode 151 of The Corner of Knit and Tea. I'm Laura, also known as Fluffy K on Ravelry, Fluffy Kira on Instagram and Twitter. I blog over at the corner of knitandtea.com, and that's where this episode and every episode show notes will be. I have an Etsy shop called The Corner of Knit and Tea, where I sell my handspun yarns. And we have a Ravelry group called The Corner of Knit and Tea. <laughs> so, hi, how are you? It is Sunday, August 27th. It is uh, mid-morning and it is rainy out. Um, I don't think it's terribly cool, but it is overcast and rainy. And you may hear some thunder during the course of this podcast because we have been getting some of that too. Um, and I am here to talk to you about what I've been knitting and spinning on this week. I hope that you have had a great week. Mine has been a little crazy. There have been all kinds of things going on. When I last spoke with you, um, my parents were in town and we were spending time with them. And then uh, Monday I was going to take off work and we were going to go watch the full solar eclipse. And we did do that and it was absolutely amazing. We had a totality, a full eclipse um, for approximately two and a half minutes. And so there was a black orb in the sky that you could see, which was the moon. And then there was the corona, sort of the halo around it as the sun um, sort of backlit the moon. Um, and the sky got dark and the birds stopped singing and the cicadas started chirping. Um, and it was dark and quiet and everything looked unnatural for about two and a half minutes. Um, uh, Kansas City basically had mixed results with the eclipse. Uh, several areas had rain and cloudy weather that day, and we actually ended up going east well into Missouri. Um, and we actually did have some cloudy weather for a little while, um, but at the moment of totality, it was perfect. Um, and it was really, really amazing. I urge you, if you ever have the chance to go see an eclipse in totality, it was just stunning. Um, so I would, I would definitely encourage you to do it. Um, my parents were with us through Monday night and then they left, uh, they went ahead and, uh, did some short trips around the Midwest and then this weekend they are with my sister and the grandbabies. So I am sure they are having a fabulous time. I went back to work on Tuesday. Work was pretty much normal. Um, sometimes the long, uh, the shortest weeks feel long, um, but so I got lots and lots of knitting done this week. I got tons of knitting done on the day of the solar eclipse. I will talk to you about that shortly. Um, and now it is weekend. So far we've had a pretty relaxing weekend. Today is a spinning Sunday, so I'm getting ready to pack up my stuff and uh, it is in the city today, not west of here. So um, I am enjoying that. And I don't know whether some of our rain is push off from um, the horrible weather that the people in the south are experiencing. Um, we had an eclipse on Monday and uh, this weekend we have Hurricane Harvey through um, much of Texas and I admit that I don't know how much it's um, influencing areas around Texas. I do know Texas is sustaining severe flooding. So if any of you are there, I hope that you are safe um, with your family and friends. Um, and I am sending thoughts to those who are in the path of the hurricane or who are trapped under the uh, torrential rains. So, like I said, it has been quite the week. Um, let's get into the podcast. So um, today I am drinking just a tea bag. It is Twining's Chai. Um, and it was sent to me with an order, um, and I am drinking it in my Greenwood pottery mug. I got this, um, it is an alpaca, and I got this one when I went to Maryland Sheep and Wool several years ago. It is just a wonderful um, warm mug, and I love chais, and of course today because it's raining, um, the warm tea is fabulous. That's delicious. So, let's get into the mints. Um, the, by far, the thing I have made the most progress on is my sweater for Camp Loopy, which is good because uh, Thursday is the deadline. Um, I am knitting the Bentley Cardigan by Marie Green. I am knitting it in a Gherkin's Bucket Longstride Sock in the Royale colorway. 
And as I said, this week I have made quite a bit of progress. Um, it's almost done. <laughs> So Monday during the eclipse, I knit the entirety of the first sleeve and seamed that up and got it together. And then the rest of the week, I have been working on the second sleeve, which is now done. Um, and my needles are still in. I am working on the um, front button band on the first side. Um, and I have about 10 more rows of that to go. And then I will need to do the button band with the button holes. And I am holding off on that one more day um, because I am hoping that my buttons will come in. I ordered them from overseas and they are not here yet. And I would love to get a look at them before I actually do the buttonholes to know if I need to make them bigger and how far apart I want them. Um, unfortunately, if they don't come in tomorrow, I will just go ahead and wing it um, because I do need to get this done. My plan is to try and get all the knitting done by tomorrow night so that I can wash it, block it, and photo it. But like I said, this is the Bentley Cardigan by Marie Green. It's got a fun um, texture wildflower stitch on the front. Otherwise, it is just a simple cardigan in a kind of fun springy color. Like I said, uh, the blue is called Royale, and I really love it. Um, so that is what I've got. You'll see it one more time as a completely finished object, but I am so close now I can taste it um, and I should be fine. Like I said, I'm going to finish this button band today and actually I might cast on for the other button band and do the first eight or ten rows so that I can just place the buttonholes and finish it off um, tomorrow, providing the buttons come. So that was my big accomplishment this week, um, was getting those sleeves done because this is all fingering weight. But I am excited, I am um, almost done, and I will uh, make my third Camp Loopy. So, and have a beautiful new cardigan to wear. So I am excited about that. Next up, I will have to look at that fabric that I bought from the Loopy U and see if I can uh, work up a skirt so that I have my outfit. So I started two new things this week, both um, in the last couple days. The first thing is that my mom came to visit this weekend and she hadn't been uh, in my house for a while. And I brought her into my craft room and she stood looking at this, my my scrap scrappy, um, mitered square blanket and was like, oh, I want one. <laughs> and um, you have to understand my parents, they live in California, so they don't need much in the way of winter gear. And um, they rarely ask for anything. So I was like, okay, I guess I'm gonna start another blanket. So I did. <laughs> so um, the pattern that I am using is called a uh, memory blanket. It is by Georgie Nicholson. She used to go by Georgie Hallam, um, but I think she got married. And it is um, a pattern, I, I don't remember, um, I didn't even look at the pattern this time. I know that I took my original from her um, and I am doing exactly what I did last time. Um, this blanket behind me was a mix of uh, worsted weight yarns and fingering yarns held double. So it was a slightly heavier weight. Um, I started it mostly because I had a lot of worsted weight and hand spun that I wanted to use up. So I am doing my mother's the exact same way. Um, which is to say I cast on 40 stitches, so 20 on each side. I'm using US 5 needles and I'm using worsted DK and fingering held double. So, and I have three squares. I've only been letting myself do a square a day um, because I have many other things I need to be doing, but I wanted to play with this and see what I had. Um, the first square is Madtosh DK in Shire. Um, that was from a Nanny Swaymo from many years ago. Um, this square actually is the yarn that I'm going to be reviewing and I'm just about to cast on with. It is Allegria Grande, Manos del Uruguay Allegria Grande in the colorway Tanat. And I love it. It's reds and blues and oranges and pinks and purples and browns. And it is beautiful. Um, I really, really like it. And I can't wait to... Um, I can't wait to work on my project with it, but I wound up the yarn yesterday and then couldn't resist and cast on a square. Um, and then the final one, this is leftovers from my um, fade. <laughs> Find your fade. This is um, hedgehog fibers. It is held double. It is her twist sock in all that. So I have my first three squares. Um, I'm going to make my mom's the same size as my link it is. It is 121 squares. On mine, I did not repeat yarn at all. Um, 
month. So I have 121 different colors of yarn. I uh, don't know if that will actually be possible on my mom's. I used up quite a bit of my scraps um, on mine. So I'm just going to have to see what I have in stash. Um, and I have a bunch of projects that I want to knit and a lot of them are with worsted yarn. So I will continue to work on this. Um, my game plan on this, well, so my mother's game plan on this was she said, you know, our wedding anniversary isn't until next June. So maybe we could have it for that. Um, maybe. We'll see. I'm not so much concerned about the knitting time um, involved in it as I am about having enough scraps to be able to do it. So we will see. Um, and I may end up repeating. Um, I mean, it wouldn't be terrible if I repeated some colors twice in the blanket um, and it might tie it together. Although she liked mine um, that was that is all different. So I guess we'll see, but that is what I have going um, and I will be taking pictures of that. I don't know whether I'll bring it every week. I guess it probably depends um, how long I keep up the a square a day. If I'm adding seven new squares a week, um, I probably will bring it back. If not, I probably won't. So you'll see this on and off over the next year. The second cast on that I did this week is something that I am test knitting for Mina, the expat knitter. I am test knitting her mix and match sweater, um, which is this great baby sweater that she designed that has a variety of options that you can um, mix and match from. So you can make a whole bunch of different sweaters basically using these options. Um, and for this one, I am knitting the two to four year size. Uh, I figure this will ultimately be a sweater for miles. Um, not for this year, but for next year. I don't mind knitting ahead. Um, I didn't have enough worsted weight in the stash because I only have single skeins for the most part. So I ordered a skein on D stash on Ravelry, which came and it is lovely. It is um, Miss Babs Yowza in the verdigris colorway. So it is just a really nice semi-solid green. Um, and it is, it is listed, um, it came with a very old label. So it's several years old and it's called a monochrome. Um, and it, so it is not even really um, tonal as much as it is, um, it is the same shade. Well, I guess it is kind of tonal. Um, it's not like a bunch of different shades of green. It is the exact shade of green in a bunch of different intensities. So there is just a little bit variation or a little bit of variation in it. And um, so Mina's sweater, and I don't want to give away too much, um, but she did say we could talk about it. So um, the mix and match part of the sweater is that there are several different things. There are two choices on neckline. There are two choices on body, whether you want to do stockinette or texture. Um, there are two choices on sleeve length, short or long. And then there are two choices on the hem. You can have a regular hem or kind of a high-low hem um, and add a few short rows on the back so the back is a little bit longer. So um, I decided to go with the regular crew neck and the textured body. Those are the choices that I've made so far. Um, and I cast on last night and got the neck band and started the raglan shaping. I'm about probably halfway done with the raglan shaping. Um, and so I am enjoying it. It is a great knit. It is well written. Um, and I am enjoying knitting with the yarn and the way the sweater looks. So I anticipate this will be a fairly quick knit, which is good because I want to get it done for her by September 15th, which is her deadline. Um, but it is a uh, size, I'm, I don't know if I said I'm knitting the size two to four years. So um, I am working on that and I will get back to that a little bit this evening. And this is going to be my, um, since my sweater is just about done, this is going to be my um, daily take with me and work on it until I am done. So I am excited about it. It is, um, it's going to be a super cute sweater and I haven't decided if, um, the pattern ranges in sizes from, uh, I think the first size is three to six months. Um, and then it ranges up to six to eight years. So, um, actually I was thinking I might go ahead and knit the next size up for Roxy. I would need to order some yarn for that. So not quite right away. Um, but sort of make them, I don't want to make them matchy matchy sweaters in the same color, but maybe make them matchy matchy sweaters in different colors and different sizes. So um, I don't know whether they'd like that or not, but I think I might do it anyway. So that is um, what I've got going on here. Um, and I will be working on that this week. So um, the other cast on that I haven't done yet, but I intend to this week 
is um, I showed you the yarn in the blanket. This is the um, Allegria Grande um, in the Tanak colorway. I uh, received one skein to knit a cowl. I received, sorry, I received one skein from Fairmount Fibers, which is the U.S. distributor of um, Monos del Uruguay yarns, and I received it free um, in exchange for a review. And I ultimately decided that what I wanted to do was knit um, a new uh, cowl by Karina Spencer. It's called Calliope, and it calls for 330 yards of DK weight. I'm not concerned about using worsted weight with it. It'll just be a little bit bigger. Um, but I was concerned about the fact that um, a skein of the Manos del Uruguay is about 200 yards. And so I ended up ordering a second skein and waiting for that to arrive. And now I have them wound up and I need to cast that on this week. So that is what I will be doing with that. So those are the knits for this week. It's a little bit more than I got to show you last week. I did not start the second sock yet. That will be another thing to work on this month after I finish some of my deadline knitting. That is the review and um, test knitting for Mina. So once I finish that, I have the extra sock to go back to. I have my Hitofude cardigan, which is the lace weight cardigan um, that I was working on in Wilmai's Lace. And then I have plenty more winter gear for the children that I would like to uh, crank out. Um, I will give it to them for the holidays, but that will be at Thanksgiving in November. So I did want to sort of get a head start on that. I need to do um, some mittens for uh, Mr. Miles. And then I need to do uh, maybe one or two hat and mitten sets for Roxy. Um, and the bonus of doing those things is also that um, they're all in worsted weight, so then I will have more scraps for my blanket. So see, everything's tying together. Uh, sip of tea and then let's go into spinning. So last week I showed you a beautiful braid of fiber. Um, well, okay, let's go back. I finally finished a spin. <laughs> this one had been going for two and a half weeks. Uh, close to three weeks, I guess, um, since I last talked about it. It was fiber that I purchased for the Tour de Fleece and didn't end up spinning during that because um, I ran out of time. It was Willy Wonka Fibers Mixed Merino in the colorway Wine Country, and um, mixed merino means it's light and dark, so it was some spots were brown, some spots were white, um, and then it was dyed in these great moody colorways with pinks and teals, and I hope you'll be able to see that. Um, it's kind of hard to see, although I have a really nice picture on my Instagram now. This is what I ended up with, which was 318 yards of probably a sport weight, um, and it is soft and pretty and it would make great socks or a nice um, shawlette or hat and mitts or cowl. Um, it came out really, really nicely. Um, and so this one is up in the shop now if that has any interest for you. Like I said, I know it's kind of hard to see the colors in it, um, but it is like a real dark moody sort of dark brown, charcoal gray, and then with pinks and blue and then some purple where they mix. So that is, that was a great spin. Last week I talked to you about how a friend of mine is doing a Citron along. Um, and Citron is a pattern by Hilary Smith Callis. It was originally published in Knitty, although she has a paid version um, which has additional modifications and ideas for making a larger one. Um, and it is a shawl that is fairly simple. It is a uh, semicircular shawl, so like a half pie. Um, and what it is is it's stockinette and then uh, interspersed with sections of kind of ruching to give it like a little ruffle. Um, and it is one of those things that I always thought I would knit and I have never knit it. And I thought maybe I would spin for it. Um, and what I showed you last week was a braid of fiber from Hello Yarn. It was called Blanc Melange. And um, it was kind of a purple and brown and white braid. Um, and the more I thought about it, <laughs> the more I thought that it was not the appropriate fiber for the task at hand. Um, what I wanted to do is spin singles for the shawl. Um, and uh, oftentimes I find that spinning singles works well with longer stapled fibers. And um, that one was a Targi bamboo, might have had some silk in it. Um, but Targi is actually fairly short stapled. It's a merino fiber. 
and I wasn't sure how the bamboo and silk, um, I know silk is a little bit longer stapled and, and sturdy, but I was just a little concerned that maybe um, I wasn't picking the right fiber for the job. So I went back and looked at my stash and actually what I found I think will be even better. I think it's in um, colors that I will wear more and it is the right kind of fiber and it was a plus sized braid. So what I ended up picking was a Julie Spins braid of Falkland, which is a longer stapled. It is still um, soft like Merino, um, but it is a little bit longer stapled, a little closer to like BFL, Blue Face Lester. And, um, I, and it is in uh, charcoal, brown, purple, pink, red, and orange, actually quite a bit like the yarn I just showed you. Um, and so I am spinning it straight through. So I opened the braid and I am just spinning singles straight through, um, which means what we have here is um, the darker half. This is probably about half of it and you can see it's browns and purples and a few spots of pink in there, but um, mostly very muted. Um, and then I am getting to the um, orange and pink and um, purple, like the, the brighter half of the braid. Um, and so this braid was six ounces, so that will give me some extra uh, length in my singles um, because I thought the Citron calls for 400 yards, but I would be um, perfectly happy to do six or 800 yards and just make it bigger. Um, and I'll probably just wing it on that part, um, but I would be perfectly happy to do that. And so um, this is the half that I have left and today is a spinning Sunday. So I expect to get um, at least half of this done today um, and then maybe the rest tomorrow or Tuesday. Um, and then I will uh, pull it off and I will finish my singles. Um, the way I usually finish my singles is I fold them just a little bit. Um, and that is a process by which you almost sort of felt your singles to try and give them some strength. Um, and you do this by plunging. Um, you do exactly what you're not supposed to do um, with most wool. You um, oftentimes, uh, one of the ways, the best ways to do it is you plunge it into cold water and then hot water and then cold water and then hot water. So exactly what you would not want to do with your um, regular wool sweater because it would shrink. Um, this sort of finishes off the singles just a little bit, so they're a little bit sturdier. Um, so that is my plan. Um, I have no idea if I'm going to be able to finish the singles on this bobbin, um, but I have another bobbin if I have to break it into two. It's not a huge deal. And um, I will say that I am using some of my knowledge from Ply Away to spin singles. So um, oftentimes when we spin, we are spinning for multiple plies. And so we actually uh, spin our singles, at least I spin my singles, with a fairly tight twist because I know that when I ply and I reverse the direction, um, some of that twist is going to come out. It's going to kind of twist back on itself, which is going to help the plying process. Now, in when you're spinning singles, you're intending them to be left as singles. Um, so you don't want to add that extra twist in it because there's nowhere for it to go. It isn't going to fall back on itself to try and ply. So um, one of the classes that I took at Ply Away was a class with Jillian Moreno where she talked, she mostly talked about color blending your singles, which I am not doing, but um, she spent some time with us on how best to spin great singles. And I will not say that I am great at this. I promise I am not. Um, but I am working on it. Um, previously, you may have heard me, if you've been with me for a while, you may have heard me talk about how, how I used to spin my singles to sort of cheat it, um, is I used to spin them regularly, so there would be lots of extra twist in them, and then I would run them through as though I were plying them, so basically run them through backwards to pull out some of the twist. And like I said, that was kind of a cheating way to do it, um, because I made the... Um, I didn't want to teach my hands to do something different, so I just went ahead and used the machine. But of course that took some extra time. So this time I have really been trying to concentrate on creating uh, nice singles. I suspect they are still overplied. Um, that is something that is sort of hard learned, but I have really been trying to um, to uh, make them better singles. And primarily the way that I have been doing that is by um, trying to spin very slowly um, so that I am not adding all the extra twists. The faster you spin, the more twist you're adding. Um, well, okay. The way you spin 
is you are taking fiber and you are drafting it out thinly and then you are adding twist so it holds together. Um, there is a ratio and it is not a set ratio, but there is a ratio of how fast you are treadling, meaning how fast the wheel is spinning, to how fast you are drafting your fiber. And if you are drafting your fiber fairly slowly and treadling fairly quickly, you are adding lots and lots and lots of twist. So that is the way I normally spin. I tend to draft fairly slowly and spin um, quite quickly so that I add lots of twist to my singles because I like I like really firmly plied yarn and I get that by adding lots of twist to my singles. So in my case, what I have been trying to do is I have been trying to spin much slower and um, leave my hands about the same. So that requires some concentration. Um, usually what happens is I start off real well and then a minute or two later my mind wanders and I have to take myself back and slow down again. The other thing that I have done is I've adjusted the take up on my wheel um, so that it is not pulling it onto the bobbin right away. Um, and so I, although now that I think about that, I think that I may actually be shooting myself in the foot with that because the longer it takes to get it on the bobbin, the more twist that is added between you and the bobbin. So I think that was probably the wrong thing to do. <laughs> I am not the most technical spinner, um, but I have been experimenting and I will say that my singles look better as singles and um, basically they're just a little bit less tightly spun. And for a long time, I was afraid that would mean that they would not hold together. Um, but I have actually done some experiments with this in some of the classes that I have taken and they do hold together. Um, so I am less worried about that now. And that is also a reason to um, do the finishing where you kind of full, it's called fulling the singles, but basically you're felting them a little bit um, and that will help keep them strong. So that's the spinning lesson for this week. I plan to uh, finish this in the next couple days. And then actually, I think I'm going to go ahead and spin the Blanc Mange that I showed you last week. And I'm gonna put that one up in the shop. Um, that one I think would make a really interesting blend for socks. And my suspicion is, um, so I get a double dose of the club because I'm kind of a wool pig. Um, but often what I do is I spin one of my Hello Yarn Club braids and put it in the shop. And then I keep the other one for myself. Um, and it is, like I said, the Targi Bamboo Silk. And I actually thought that would make a really nice blend for some sturdy socks, some soft but sturdy socks. And so I think I'll probably spin it into sock yarn for myself, but I don't know what I'll spin the one for the shop with. Um, I'll probably just let it tell me what it wants to be. So that is what I've got for the week ahead. Um, this was a little bit longer podcast. Sorry if I digressed into some technical t stuff that you weren't interested in. Um, but I wanted to explain a little bit about my rationale. Most of the time I sit down at the wheel and I let the wheel and the fiber tell me what it wants to be. Uh, very rarely do I actually spin with intention for something in particular. Um, so I just wanted to share my thought process of how I am doing this particular intentional spinning. So I think that's about it for this week. Thank you for joining me. If you were new here, I hope you enjoyed and we'll see you again. If you were returning, thanks for coming back and hanging out with me. I always enjoy seeing you. And I will say, as I always do, happy knitting, happy spinning, happy sipping, and I'll see you next time. Bye.